Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Today's video we're talking about ping command and its use. So if you're doing tech support, help desk, network administration of some sort, or just tech support in general for a company, chances are you will be using ping command to troubleshoot different issues, uh, different connection issues over that network. So let me see, well, let me show you how I got this idea. So I went to CosmicNova.com which is my website. And then I picked um, one of my popular uh, articles that is called Top 20 Desktop Support Interview Questions and Answers. There's a link right here if you want to check it out. And I picked just the random thing that I saw, and that is a question number 14, what is a ping command and its use? So just so you know, the way I explain things is in a slower manner where uh, I try to explain things in, in a, such a way that anybody can understand computers you know what I mean so my videos are specifically designed for people who might be new to help desk or tech support but if you also have experience this might be a good refresher for you so I will be going at a bit of a slower pace and explain as best as I can so it's easy to understand so if you're doing tech support or desktop desktop support or what have you chances are you'll be using ping command so what is ping command and its use I'm going to talk about the first part of it and explain the whole thing, but my written answer here is generally the ping command is used to determine whether your computer has access to external resources or the internet. So anything that is considered external resources is anything that's outside of the connection of your computer. So let's say you're using a desktop PC at work or a laptop, and then you're trying to access an external resource like a shared drive or a server or a website, whether it's internal or external, and you are you can't connect to it, or there's a you know issue with latency or lag of some sort, it's running slow. That's how ping command would be used. And all these things are considered as external resources. So something that your computer connects to over the network. Okay. Now through command prompt. CMD, you can type in, for example, ping www.microsoft.com. And this is an example of a ping command. So let's go ahead and open up CMD. I'm going to top, open up command line, command prompt, or whatever you call it. I keep saying command prompt, command line. I use Linux too, so sometimes I forget which one is which. Anyways, we're going to use this example that we have here, and it's ping www.microsoft.com. So let's see what happens when a normal working website is up and running and see the result from it. Did I misspell that? Of course I did. Microsoft.com. I'm trying to multitask here, so <laughs> you will forgive me. <laughs> okay, so one of the first things that comes up that you will notice here is a number, which is an IP address, which is uh, controlled by the DNS and the DNS basically what it does is takes a domain name in this case microsoft.com and translates it into a an IP address which is the location of this website on a server so the server for microsoft.com is located at 23.45.133.21 so that's the IP address for the server uh, of the server for the mic for microsoft.com okay so now these are real results of the ping command for a normal running website that is up and running and there are no problems so what happens is ping command sends four packets of data so you can see here that it sent four packets they are size of 32 bytes and then it waits for a response and how long it takes to respond which is shown here in milliseconds so this is the first attempt from uh off the ping to this ip address and we can see that the response time here that it took 14 milliseconds to respond and then the ping command does it again which is the second time and this time it replied in 15 milliseconds and then the third time also 15 milliseconds and then fourth time also 15 milliseconds hence four packets sent right very very easy to understand but of course for it to actually respond for actually to have a response 
of any sort, it has to send back four packets as well. So you can see here that the server at 23451331 also sent back four packets which were received at the same size. And then we can see that lost zero, that means it was successful. That means none of the packets failed, that all the four pings were successful. That's a, an example of successful ping command. We know everything is okay with this website. So let's go find a website that doesn't work. So I went to this website and this website kind of tells you of some of the, you know, big websites that are down. So let's kind of pick a random one here. Let's pick Trivago.com here. That's a safe website. We're going to type in ping Trivago. Well, let's do www.trivago.com. Www now, if this website is down, like it says it is, we're going to get some negative results, which would be a good example of use of, of how you use a ping command and how to help you troubleshoot the issues. So, so far, we can see that it's timing out. What does that mean? That the first packet was sent and it didn't connect. It waited a certain amount of time, didn't connect to the server, or the server didn't reply, I should say, and then it timed out. And then the second time as well, I'm sorry, first time, second time, and we're waiting for the third one. Third one timed out. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go all full screen here. Let me kind of move some of this stuff out of the way so it's easier to see. And we can see that all four packets sent timed out. That means that the server just, we you know, the, the ping, you know, waited, waited. You know, we waited and the server didn't respond, time out. There's only a certain amount of time ping command will wait for a response. And that's what happened. And we can again see here that four packets are sent. So and then zero received. And in this example, Trivago.com is located at this IP address. That's the server, that's the web server for the Trivago.com. And now we can see that we sent four, we waited, we waited, nothing happened, we received zero because it's down. And then we lost four. That means we sent four and they never came back, which gives us 100% loss of packets. So how does this help us? Well, for for one thing, we know the website is down or you know, a server that you're trying to access at your job is down. Right? We can, you know, web server or some some other network component, some other network resources. You know, if you have the name for it or the IP address, you can just ping the IP address. If you wanted to, you can just type in ping, you know, IP address 35179 Dot zero zero two dot two zero zero. And here we go again. We're pinging Trivago's server again, except we're just directly bypassing the domain name. And we're bypassing the DN well, we're not necessarily bypassing the but we're bypassing the uh, domain name. We're going directly to pinging the server itself. And again, it's timing out, which is another indicator that the website is down. So going back to the uh, my question of how does this help us aside from knowing that the website is down? So if it's an external website, what we would have to do is find the web uh, webmaster for it or a person who has access to the server. Same thing goes for if it's ex internal website. So let's say your business, the, or the business that you work for has some kind of internal website that everybody goes to, everybody uses it, you know, this and that. And you know, you don't have necessarily access to it, you would find that webmaster and contact them. So how would you go about that? Well, if you know who the owner of Trivago.com is, you would contact them directly, obviously. But if you don't know who the owner is, based off the, the name of the Trivago.com, based off the domain name, you can see who the owner is of this IP address. And this is something that uh, this is something that your company would provide this to you if you're doing tech support. So you would basically have a tool that lets you tool or, you know, some kind of notes or something. I don't know. It, this is all depends on, this varies from place to place, you know. But, for example, at my main job, I know, I will know who owns this IP address. So 
Not only can I look up to see who owns Trivago.com, for example, I can also look up who owns this IP address, and then I would contact that guy who is the owner of this IP address, or a guy or a gal or whatever. Um, I, I would contact them and say, hey, this website is down. But the only time I would do that is if I don't have direct access to this. So let's say it, this is a server that I have, you know, that I'm running and everybody in the business here is using it as just a storage location. You know, let's say this is just a web server that hosts files for everybody in my building that I support. Well, I would simply just try this. You know, if I don't have physical access to it, I would open up remote desktop connection, type in 8.35.179.200. See if I can connect to it, you know, and it's going to fail because obviously I don't have access to it. And, you know, that's okay. But if I have physical access to it and I know where it's located in the data center or in a server room or whatever it is, chances are this you know, this server might be just turned off or, you know, there might be something else bad with it. But at least I will know that there is something wrong going on by using the ping command and that will get me to either me fixing it or finding who can fix it. And that's how you would use ping command in a business environment. You know, if you're doing more network, network administration support you can use traceroute and find out more uh, about this but i will save that for a, another video so be sure to subscribe all right guys i hope you like this easy to follow video please share this video with your friends i really appreciate it it really helps me uh helps helps support my channel basically so thank you so much please leave a like and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.